4, 8, 12, 16 S. This thing is like a literal squid. That's pretty funny. I've never done anything like this in my life before. Check this out, it's literally as big as my head. This is the largest ESC I've ever held in my hands. This thing runs 16S LiPo. We are gonna be soldering it up today and why it's gonna be pretty cool is because I've never soldered anything like this before and it's gonna come out pretty cool. So if you find that interesting, make sure you drop a like and subscribe for more. All right guys, so without any further ado or blowing ourselves up, let's hop into this. Now this monstrosity of an ESC is from XC Technologies. That's the box that they came in. And there's some pretty cool features to this. There's a fan on the top. There's also a fan underneath. You could also run this thing censored, which is actually really nice. And seven gauge wires. So the wires are pretty darn big and that's exactly what you need with something this big. Now being that there's a lot of S's to this ESC. And if you guys also see, we have four QSA connectors over here. Therefore, I wanna give myself options. So I could either run four plus four plus four plus four S, four, eight, 12, 16 S, or I can run six, 12, and then I could run another four S, six, 12, and four. That makes 16 S. You really wanna make sure you have the least possible resistance when you run all these connectors and wires. Therefore, that's why we're running the six gauge castle wire over there. Now, if you guys haven't seen Innovation RC on Instagram, make sure you give that a quick little look at because we have some sweet behind the scenes footage, teasers, and also customer builds, such as this sweet carbon fiber Arma Limitless over here. This is actually a customer's car. Make sure you check it out. There's a lot of stuff on there. Now, this here is a Castle 2028-800KV. Look at the size difference. The ESC is longer than the motor, that's just absolutely insane. I just had that over there just for a little size comparison, just so you guys could see the pure girth of this damn ESC. It's just crazy, it really is. All right, so here we go. We got our ESC over here. We have our wires, connectors, and this is actually a little jig from Power Hobby. Um, this is what we're gonna be tinning all of our wires on just because it holds it and it actually allows a lot of the heat energy to transfer from here instead of going down the wire. All right, so here I have the ESC. And we are all zoomed in over there, all nice and nice. Gonna be tinning these wires real quick. Quick as in effectively quick, not not meaning uh let me just hurry up and get done with this. There we go, keep the heat on, make sure we add solder in through the bottom and the top, and bam, we're off. Just like that is a quick easy tin. I know that they pre-tin it but you never know how good or crappy that it would be tinned. Just precautionary measure so that you get a constant clear and easy connection. Solder flew right from the bottom and got stuck right in. So we are perfect over there. What I'm gonna wanna do is tin the wires. I already cut them to size and I also stripped the insulation. That's pretty much easy. You just take a pair of very sharp scissors and gently go all the way around, take it off and just do that for all of these other wires. Now, as you can see what I'm doing, I'm pretty much uniforming the wire directions. So it's pretty much not gonna be all the way up and out. So this is how I like to do it. Of course, soldering is, I feel soldering is an art. It just depends on how you feel most comfortable doing it. So what tinning does, instead of just putting the wire in the connector and adding solder, tinning basically allows solder to go inside the wire just so that it can have a more solid, um, basically connection once we put into the connector. And um, yeah, so on and so forth. That was pretty easy. Don't let them fool you thinking that you need a crazy digital iron, this and that. I gotta tell you, I told myself, you know, I'll get one of those digital irons um, once this one takes a crap, in which this has yet to do that. And look what we're soldering. I'm not doing 10 gauge wire. We're doing seven gauge and this actually feeds it quite well. Step one is now done. We finally just got done with the tinning of all the tips just so that when they go into the connector, it has a solid connection. That's what you really want. We did the three bridge wires and then we also did the ESC wires. All right, so up next on what we're gonna wanna do, we're gonna wanna take one of the bridge wires and put it in any connector. Doesn't matter anyway. So we're just gonna do that for right now. But up next, there will be an order that we will have to go by. Now, I'm just going to want to 
be careful and take my time and also be somewhat quick at the same time because you don't really want to keep the heat on the connector for uh, for that long but we want to make sure that we still get a really good solder joint um, between the wire and the actual connector all right perfect done look at that that is literally perfect and that's what we're gonna to wanna to do another three times. We do really need to be careful with everything else that we do from here on out, okay? So I'm putting one collar on, because that's gonna go this way, and then the other collar going on the opposite way, because we're gonna have a whole nother QSA connector to solder. So what we need to do now is acknowledge that was soldered to the negative terminal, okay, of this connector. What we're gonna to wanna to do is solder it to the opposite end. So if that's negative, what's the opposite of negative? Positive, that means this side is positive, and I like tilting it up just a hair, just to allow the solder to go inward towards the connector instead of out and bridging it. This is basically holding it, and I want to kind of position the bridge connector directly over there. What we're going to want to do is solder once again. It really doesn't matter how we do it, but we're going to want to solder another of these series bridges onto this. And so that's like that. I'm trying to get this in the camera too so you guys can see. And a little bit of a zoom. We're literally just gonna repeat this process once again. You gotta be patient, allow the solder to get into the wire and have gravity pull it down onto the connector or the, the tab or whatever. And bam. There's another one. Let's get a zoom out here. Now you guys are gonna kind of see the, um, the process at which, how we're doing this. Now we're gonna wanna take this wire and move it onto there. And there you go. And now how you know that you've done the series connection, right? You have to go negative, positive, negative, positive. If you go out of order one time, you are screwed. And if you do it incorrectly, you will know because you will blow your eyebrows off. So this here is good. This back in the jig rig, the jig rig 2000. And here we go. This is gonna be number, number three. Put a little bit of solder and we're just gonna wait for it to um, go underneath here now. Adding a little bit more just to cover the top and the sides. And there we go. Look at that. It's a beauty. This is a $29, $28 iron. You don't need a two, $300 iron to do all this stuff. What you need is to get the basics of soldering down. You need to understand how it works and what works best for you. Don't let someone try to upsell you a $140, $180 hobby grade iron. All right, so now we actually have a series loop. This is what you see coming from an ESC, okay? But we're still not done. We're actually halfway done. <laughs> Woo. Let's keep going on now. Now we're going to clip this just like so. This is positive, so that means we want it to come from a negative. There we go. So there's the opposite end. Putting it in our jig rig. And look at that. Just That's exactly how you want it right there. Putting some iron. Um, some iron. Oh my god. We're putting some solder on the iron. There you go. And now we just got to let heat and gravity do its trick. There we go, I see it flowing down. That's the word, flow. Adding solder to where it makes a nice little bead around the connector tab. Look at that, that is literally perfect. Better than the factory. That is actually perfect, guys. Now we're gonna to wanna to do our last connector on the only wire that is left. Now, what is this? This is positive, which means this end has to be negative. If you guys know what I did incorrectly, make sure you to leave it in the comments because I'm gonna actually fix it right after this. Here is our last one. Boom. That's how we do it, guys. All right, so I'm actually gonna fix that part that I left out, and if you guys Guess correctly, well, I missed a collar. Now to desolder, you just gotta be very careful because solder can drip, solder can flow, and you just wanna make sure you control the flow in the direction where you want it to go. I'm not trying to rhyme, I swear. Now, if you did this right, there should be one negative and one positive left to solder onto the ESC over here. Negative, 
negative. No, I'm just kidding. Positive. <laughs> if you saw negative over here, you screwed somewhere up in the series loop. So now we just got to do the ESCs connectors over here. So now here we go. This is going to be the pot. Is this positive? No, it's negative. See, I would have blew myself up. Exactly just like that. You always want to double, triple check. So this is our positive and you got to make sure it's going into positive obviously. Now this here, I can't exactly use my jig rig. I actually have this little 25 cent thing from Harbor Freight. So I could still pretty much hold onto the wire without it burning my fingers. And I'm going to allow my hand to keep pressure, a little bit of pressure, just so that the connector stays down instead of up. Oh my God, that fits so much better inside the connector. Boom, just like that. Now we're pretty much surrounded all the way around the wire which is perfect, cannot get any better than that. Let's get a zoom in on that pearly. <laughs> Completely solid all the way around. That's better than a machine. All right, so I'm pretty much just wanting to allow it to naturally like lay out. So it's not like twisted when it's in the car. Now this is gonna be the final and last solder connection. Now you guys can see the color over there. I was about to forget it again. <laughs> Even though I already know that we are correct on this, you always wanna check. This is 100% this is ground. You want to make sure it's going on to the negative because if this open connector was positive and we're up to our negative part of the ESC, again, you would have your eyebrows blown off. So for this final solder, we're going to get a nice little zoom in over here. We're going to do a mega zoom now. Oh, look at that. I'm going to try to not block it so you guys can see. I'm going to turn the exposure up a tad. Oof. Can't get any better than that. Final solder, guys. Here we go. We're putting a little bit of uh, solder on the top so that we distribute the heat properly. Going to allow it to flow to the bottom. Just like that. Then we're gonna wanna add solder to the top. Feed, 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 and release. Now while it's still kind of hot, you don't really wanna wait too long because the flux can get into the little collar. Um, well, where the collar seats, you want to make sure that you um, push it in. Yeah, while it's still. There we go. Look at this final outcome. This is badass. Four, eight, 12, 16 S. This thing is like a literal squid. That's pretty funny. I've never done anything like this in my life before. This is a $29 iron that I use. I've been using it for over a decade. It did not choke at all when soldering this six gauge wire. Yet I've seen some of the, hob the hobby grade ones choke. Don't be fooled. Make sure you actually get an iron that has a larger heating element and make sure you get comfortable with the tools that you have. Listen, this was 12 bucks. This is a $5 vice grip. You need some scissors. And this thing is 25 cents from Harbor Freight and solder wherever. Make sure you're good and proficient at what you do to make sure you have a professional solder job every single time. No, I did not rehearse doing this. I never soldered something like this before and this is how it came out. So we're finally done and we made a quad series connection. Something I've been wanting to do for the longest time and finally XC Technologies has given me <laughs> A reason to. It's a 300 amp censored 16S ESC. It's got some serious stats to it. So if you guys want to see more of that, I actually have a link in the description below as well as the comments. So make sure you check that out. All right, guys. So I hope you found this video informative and um, I'm I'm itching, right? I'm itching to run this darn ESC. So I appreciate you watching. Make sure you stay safe, pin your wires, and have a good one.